Hi there, welcome to another chaplaincy wellbeing video. Um, so last week we talked a bit about what stress and anxiety are and what are the kind of unhelpful thinking patterns that we engage in. And in this video, we're gonna talk about what practical things you can do to help yourself and improve your wellbeing. Um, so firstly, I want to talk to you about your information diet. In other words, where do you get your information and your news from? So it's really important to stay informed about the world around us, but especially at the moment, reading the news too much can be really overwhelming. This is because firstly, there's a lot of uncertainty and change, but also the media tend to sensationalize stories and emphasize the negative or rare cases. When we read distressing news stories, it activates a stress response in our brain and our nervous system. You know, from an evolutionary perspective, we weren't designed to be consuming news and information 24 hours a day. And that's why reading too much news or spending too much time on social media can leave you feeling very on edge and a bit stressed out and anxious. So it's really important to be mindful about your information diet. Try limiting the amount of time you spend on social media and reading the news. And make sure that you use reliable sources to get information such as the BBC or the NHS website if you want to get accurate information about COVID-19. And also just remember that social media and the news tend to highlight the worst case scenarios and we do need to take caution, not just to protect ourselves, but especially to protect other people who are more vulnerable. And that's why it's really important to do things like use hand sanitizer, wear a mask on public transport, and just be mindful of your health and other people's health. But it's also important to emphasize that it is really rare for a young person to die from COVID-19. Um, the UK scientific advisors believe that the death rate for coronavirus is about 1%, but that, relate, but that rate is much lower for young people, especially people your age. Um, and so while you know, it is important to be cautious and to be mindful of the risk to ourselves and others, it's also important to get it in perspective. The likelihood is if you do get coronavirus, you will be fine. Um, and the fact is we all face risk in our daily lives all the time. You know, getting into a car is probably one of the most dangerous things any of us will ever do, but we do it all the time without thinking. Um, and it's natural for risks that are new and uncertain like coronavirus to make us feel more anxious. Um, but it's important to get it in perspective and to also look for the positive stories in the news look at the amazing things people are doing to help each other and all the progress we're making in terms of moving towards finding a vaccine and finding proper treatment. I think this can also be applied to other things. So a lot of people get really anxious about climate change, which is totally valid and it is a really important issue. But if we're constantly reading about, you know, the threats we face in the future, that is gonna really stress us out as well. So my second tip for you, and this is a really good practical exercise, it's called spheres of influence. And this is a way to target those what if thinking styles and the catastrophizing. And you do this by focusing on what are the things that are in your control. Research shows that doing this has a clear positive impact on your health and well-being, And it's really easy to do. So you start by just getting a plain piece of paper and you draw a big circle. Inside the circle, think about all the things that you can control. So this could include precautions like washing your hands, taking time to look after yourself, eating a balanced diet, going to bed at a good time, but you know, also making time to see friends and do things that restore you and refresh you. So just think about all the things that are in your control. So for me, you know, I've got a master's degree that I'm supposed to be doing. You know, I have my work to do at SPH. I do some volunteering in my community. And I find that when I am able to focus on those things in my control, I feel so much better um, than when I worry about the things that I can't control. Um, but there are lots of things I can't control. I can't control when we'll have a vaccine. I can't control when school is going to go back to normal, or when, you know, life as we know it will return. Um, so... I have to try and let go of these things and that's really hard. It's hard to kind of let go of the things that we can't control. But I know that when I worry about the things that I can't control, it only makes me feel worse. It makes me feel really stressed and really anxious. So I try and be pragmatic and if I can't actively do anything to change something, I try to focus on other things. 
and the spheres of influence exercise, writing out what I can control and what I can't, really helps me to do that. And I hope it will help you too. So give that a try this week if you can. But sometimes the best way to, to you know, deal with the things that we worry about that we can't control, sometimes we just need to distract ourselves. Um, and there are, you know, there are healthy ways to distract ourselves and to deal with the stress of the uncertainty and the unknown. And, you know, this is an opportunity to just, you know, invest in some real self-care, um, you know, catching up with friends on a video call or going for a socially distanced walk is a great way to do this. You could watch a film, your favourite film, listen to some music, make some art, play a game. Uh, you could also focus on, you know, learning a new skill, like an instrument, or learning how to make a new recipe. Think of, try and make a list of activities that you find fun and relaxing, so that when you're feeling overwhelmed or anxious, if you do, you can go to that list and pick something that you know is going to calm you down and make you feel better. And finally, it's really important skill, I think, to learn how to focus on our breath as a way to calm ourselves down and give us a sense of peace when we're feeling overwhelmed. Um, and I think this is a really underrated skill, I know it really helps me. So there are lots of different exercises you can do and I'm just going to share one with you which is known as belly breathing which basically refers to kind of taking really deep breaths in and focusing on expanding your belly rather than sucking sucking the air in. So when you breathe in you want to kind of like expand your chest and your belly and then when you breathe out you kind of want to pull it back in and really push all of the air out and getting that air flowing is going to really help you to feel calmer and just breathing slowly and taking time to notice your body as you breathe in and out is really grounding. So what you can try doing is just doing a slow exercise where you breathe in for four seconds, hold your breath for two seconds and then breathe out for six seconds. Do that a few times and I promise you you're going to feel calmer afterwards. But there are also lots of apps you can check out that can help you um, with mindfulness and breathing exercises, for example, the Headspace app and the Smiling Minds app. There's lots of free resources out there if you want some extra help. Thank you for watching and as ever, if you ever want to talk to someone about how you're feeling, especially if you're feeling anxious at this time, you can reach out to the chaplaincy team, your form tutor, Mrs Leonard, the inclusion team and anybody at school that you feel that you trust. SPH is here to support you. Have a great day.